what is the difference between cryoablation or freezing and heat-based ablations like radiofrequency and microwave in the treatment of thyroid nodules? Why do we prefer cryoablation in some thyroid nodules? Here are the explanations. This is a transverse uh, section or drawing of the neck uh, which shows the thyroid glands and also the windpipe or trachea. So the thyroid is on both sides and in front of the windpipe. Uh, next to the thyroid there are arteries and veins on both sides and these are called carotid artery and jugular vein. <coughs> uh, these red spots are important nerves um, that may be responsible for your voice and uh, uh, other functions. So we need to protect these nerves during the procedure. Uh, this is what we do in heat-based ablations like laser, radiofrequency, and microwave. With local anesthesia from the skin, we advance the needle into the nodule. But this is here, uh, several millimeters at the tip of the needle is the heating part. So since the heating part is much smaller than the nodule itself, we need to move it. So the technique is called moving shot. So the operator advances the needle and withdraws it until he thinks that he has killed most of the nodule. In this technique, naturally, there are untouched areas between these needle sticks. So these areas may still survive after these radio frequency or microwave ablations. So for this reason, we prefer these ablation techniques in benign nodules because in a benign nodule, our aim is to kill most of the nodule and make it smaller. Our aim is not to kill it completely. But if the nodule is cancer, or if there is a suspicion of cancer, then the story is different. In such a case, we need to kill the nodule completely. So no single cell must survive. Uh, in cryoablation, we also advance a needle, but the needle is a little bit different. Here in this needle, the active tip is longer and generally suits to the length of the nodule. So we put the needle in the center of the uh, nodule to be ablated and we don't, do not move it. Uh, when we turn on the machine, an ice ball is formed around the needle slowly and we generally see this ice ball growing during the procedure very easily on ultrasound. By time, the ice ball grows and gradually covers the nodule completely. And also, the ice ball goes beyond the boundaries of the nodule. And this ice ball is readily visible during the procedure on ultrasound, CT or MRI. So we can make sure that the whole nodule is ablated and the, every single cell in the nodule is killed by cryoablation uninterruptedly. For this reason, we prefer cryoablation if the nodule is not benign, that is, if the nodule is cancer or if there is a suspicion for cancer. Similarly, in difficult nodules, such as toxic nodules that secrete a lot of thyroid hormones, 
the nodule has to be killed completely for a successful result. So in such cases also, our preferred method is cryoablation. Heat-based ablations like radiofrequency and microwave is also uh, uh, not sufficient if the nodule is too large, like over 5 cm in diameter. In such large nodules, uh, it has been shown that if you use radiofrequency or microwave, you need to, to do several ablations to achieve a good result. But uh, in cryoablation, at least in our experience, we have seen that uh, we are able to uh, achieve uh, like 80%, uh, 90% volume reduction rate at six months, uh, even after a single uh, cryoablation session. So in conclusion, we prefer cryoablation over heat-based ablations like radiofrequency and microwave if the nodule is cancerous, if there is a suspicion for cancer, if the nodule is toxic nodule, and uh, if the nodule is too large for uh, radiofrequency and microwave ablation.